whatever order that you want. Yeah, that's, that's a good point.
Good morning and welcome to the Frederick Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath. It is really nice to have you guys joining us today and I want to thank you so much for being with us. I have a few announcements that I would like to make. The first one is um, from the conference. There's a couple from the conference I want to let you know about and they were put it into the Chesapeake Currents email uh, that goes out to all the membership, at least the membership that they have their email addresses for. And that is we will not be having an in-person camp meeting this year in June. So when we would normally have camp meeting the third week of June, we will not be having camp meeting. They're going to be trying to do something online, though, during that time. So we will have more uh, news, more information available. And then the second, uh, new, the second piece that I'd like to bring you from the conference is there will be no summer camp this year. There will be no summer camp at Mount Etna this year. So those were two things, two decisions. It was... It was really tough. I really appreciate what our conference leadership has done under the direction of uh, Elder, uh, Elder Rick Rimmers and his leadership team of Jerry Lutz and Eli and Eduardo. And with the executive committee, it would, they had to make some really tough decisions with some of the how we're being impacted by the coronavirus. Uh, but I really appreciate their leadership and their sensitivity, their care with all of this and how they're just making sure uh, that they're taking care of the membership and their employees. So more information will be coming out about the camp meeting time. Um, so be aware of that. We'll put it in the Frederick Happenings or the Frederick Connections email, as well as it'll be made available through the Currents. If you don't have, if you're not receiving the Chesapeake Currents, uh, please email me. Let me know. And if you would like to sign up for that, let me know. And I will pass your email on to the conference. And or I will give you the information so you can subscribe to that email so you can be in the loop as far as what's going on. Uh, the other thing I would like to make you aware of is that we are really working. I've been working with Tom and Doug and and we're trying to come up with ways to do an, not an in-person church service, but a drive-in service. That is something that the state has made available to each one of uh, us as a congregation. And so we're trying to figure out how, to, how we do that with the equipment that we have. And so when we are able to do that, we will let you know. And we will have the date when we're all able to come together in our cars with our windows rolled up in safety uh, to worship together in the church parking lot. I was thinking, I'm throwing around a couple ideas here for a platform. I'm thinking if we get a big flatbed trailer in our parking lot, that could be our platform that we could sing from, preach from, do things from, and we know we could call it, we could call it Frederick Trailer Church. You like it? I, I love it. I think it's a phenomenal idea, and since I have such great response from you, uh, I think we'll go ahead and move forward with that name, Frederick Trailer Church. I uh, also want to let you know that we have uh, Bible studies throughout the week. We have prayer meeting on Tuesday night, uh, and the information to uh, check in on that is in the Frederick Connections email. We have a Thursday morning Bible study uh, that's taking place, and once again in the Frederick Connections email, the information is there. And we are going to be starting a Wednesday night Bible study as well. More details will follow on that because we haven't got uh, the, uh, uh, the, the time the, uh, firmed up yet. So in saying all of that, once again, I want to wish you a happy Sabbath. And I want to reiterate something I said in the Frederick Happenings email uh, video that I put out. And that is, do you like uh, Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kreme? Uh, do you go to Home Depot or Lowe's? Uh, do you go to Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's, Taco Bell, Chipotle? Well, this is a Chipotle church because we have a couple Chipotle employees in the room right now. But ultimately, we've, we're used to having choice. And a lot of our choices have been limited uh, due to COVID-19 and some of the restrictions and mandates that have been coming down. We always have a choice to choose Jesus. But we also always have a choice to share Jesus with others. And that is never limited in sharing the love of Jesus Christ with others. And so my prayer today is that you would prayerfully consider how God is calling you to share the love of Jesus today and who to share it with. And tomorrow and the next day, who God is calling you to share the love of Jesus Christ with and who he is calling you to share that with. At this time, I'm very happy that we have Brenda, and we have, we're going to have live music that today as she leads us in song service. So now, Brenda, I will turn it over to you to lead us in music. Thank you. Why don't you all join me today in singing, There is Sunshine in My Soul Today. The words are going to be on your screen.
Kelly is playing the piano today, and we are going to sing now a hymn, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. Amen. Thank you very much to both of you. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 5, Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards himself will be far from them. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, there are thorns, there are snares out there. In fact, when you tell the parable of the sower who goes out to sow seed, you say that some of the seed falls amongst the thorns and the thistles. And it grows and it gets choked out. God, there are many things that the devil tries to do to choke us out of following you, of giving our lives to you, to get us to care about the things of this world. Right now, there are things in this world that are going on that are causing us to care. And God, you tell us to cast all our cares upon you. God, your word says here that he who guards himself for these things will be protected. God, sometimes we don't even know when there's a snare, when something is a thorn. And God, we pray, Lord, I have proven over and over again that I cannot guard myself. God, I need you. 
I need your help. I need your spirit. I need your guidance, your wisdom, your discernment, your understanding. God, I need your love to help me understand, to help me know when to avoid, when to engage. And God, in everything that I say and do, God, my prayer is that we would not guard our relationship with you. God, that we would share our relationship with you. That now more than ever, Lord, as people are guarding themselves from getting sick or guarding themselves from whatever, God, that you would reveal to us the ways in which we can share the love of Jesus Christ with others. May everything we say and do bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ today. May we remember that, God, you are our rock. You are our refuge. And you will take care of us through this time. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. So, hello. My name is Mr. Trevin, and I'm going to be telling the children's story today. Although it's not really today, it's more like Monday before today. And you'll be hearing this on Sabbath, so it's, it's going to be a while. But I'm very excited, and I am told my wife, Michelle, that I'm going to be telling the children's story, and she said that I needed a haircut. So, because I want to tell the children's story and I'm excited about it, I'm going to get a haircut. Okay? I'm not sure if I need one. Let me see. But, okay, I'm just going to go on faith that I need a haircut. All right, let's go get one. So here we are, and we're ready for this big adventure. I'm so excited. I'm going to get my hair cut, and it's going to be cut at home, uh, and, um, and my lovely wife, Michelle, is going to do it for me. I don't have to do it myself. All right, are you sure? I am sure. Let's get her done. I've never done this before. Well... It's right. always the first. I'll give it a try. Always the first time. Okay. Let's do it. All right. steady. Mm -hmm. Now they're kind of shaky. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Did you know, boys and girls, a long time ago, my lovely wife, Michelle, when she was a little girl, she cut her hair. Yes, but she was excited when she did it. So this is kind of like a return for her. I hope this turns out better. I think, I know it will. story and guess what I think my family did too especially Michelle and you know there's somebody else who's really excited right now too and it's Jesus Jesus is right now at home getting ready for us and there's a Bible verse that tells about that in fact there's three in John 14, verse 1 to 3. 
It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, Jesus is home preparing a place for us. And guess what? Right now we're home. And one of the things we can do is prepare a place in our heart for him. And that is our children's story for today. Shall we have a quick prayer? Dear Jesus, we're home now and we know that you are with us. Help us to prepare a place for you in our hearts and help us to know in that place that you are with us and that you love us and that you are always beside us and beside the people that we love wherever they may be in their homes as well or in the hospital guide us protect us and keep us safe in jesus name amen and so linda for the offering call since we're doing things a little bit different i just have a couple questions for you and the first one is uh, why do you return your tithes and give your offer well, because uh, working in finance, I know how important our gifts are in meeting the needs of our church. And I also am excited about what we do in our ministry because um, uh, when we minister to our community and to our church at all levels, seniors, families, uh, children and youth, I know how important that is. And so um, each month I set aside a part because I know that that needs to be something that uh, needs to be returned because it is it is very helpful. But you know, through this crisis, I think of something else that's kind of come to realization to me is that we need to do more than just do it because it's a plan that we have. But I think it's something that we need to think of as, uh, I'm thankful, uh, uh, this is a love offering. You know, there's a beautiful and um, impressive story that is found in Mark 12, 42, about the widow and about how she gives everything she has and gives her two mites. And, you know, I know that she did this not thinking that she was going to significantly improve the synagogue budget or that she was going to be able to uh, help a vast number of people with a small, very small gift. But I think she did it because of her love for God. And um, it also allowed her to begin to grow spiritually uh, because she'd given all that she had. And uh, undoubtedly, I think, too, that she grew in faith because she began to um, realize that he was going to provide for her and he was taking care of her. And I'm sure that she faced many challenges uh, since she had become a widow and that uh, there were probably some pretty scary times for her. But she was just so overwhelmed in her love um, for God that she was willing to do this. And so I know that um, that's an important one for me, that I need to think about that and not just make it a set amount. But maybe I need to think about uh, all that he has done for me and all the times that he has provided and cared for me. Um, I know that we're facing a lot of uncertain times right now, and um, we're dealing with a lot of stuff. We have a lot of decisions, a lot of challenges, but, um, you know, we just need to, to trust him and to be willing to, to show our love for him. So I hope today that people will consider um, giving a love gift, uh, a thank offering for him, uh, for all the care that he gives for us. Linda, as we do go through all these things, and it has caused us to, uh, I guess, gain a new perspective on life. Uh, um, what would be a word of encouragement? What's brought you encouragement? What's brought you peace or hope during this time? Well, I think in the beginning, I was just overwhelmed with all the many changes that I was seeing in the world, uh, in our community, and even in my neighborhood. Uh, I know I was watching too much news and uh, I worried about the impact that it was going to have on me and my family as some of them had lost their jobs uh, because of this um, 
uh, crisis that we're having right now, um, I really missed the freedom to be out and about. And so I kind of made an important decision. Um, I decided that, first of all, I was going to spend a lot more time reading the Bible and in prayer and reading some of those inspirational books that I had sitting around that I'd been putting off uh, when I had a little more time. I also decided to be um, a little more careful in how much news I was watching because it just seemed it was a constant influx. And so I began to pick up some projects and other things that were long overdue uh, to be done. It was great to be able to walk into a closet that uh, was all clean and organized in a garage that looked 100% better and uh, all the things that you do in the kitchen. But I think one of the most important for me was uh, I decided I wanted to begin a list of uh, choosing some things that were that I was thankful for. And so each day was a challenge to come up with something new to put on that list. And then several times throughout the day to think about why that was such a thing that I was thankful for. What was it that was um, uh, important to me in being thankful for that. And one of the things that I noticed as I was looking over my list the other day was how many times I had mentioned spring in there. Uh, I have a beautiful uh, flowering cherry tree and in the back it was just blooming like crazy for several days. And even when the blossoms began to fall off, it was a beautiful springtime uh, snow shower outside. And then all the azaleas started, the daffodils, and then in the front, trees began blooming there, fruit trees. And, you know, I've missed so much of that, I guess, because I've been so busy. And now I've had to slow down and uh, something I look forward to again. But I have a couple of texts that were very reassuring I'd like to share with you. The first is in Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And I think my favorite one is one in Philippians. Philippians 4, um, 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus i'd like to pray if you don't mind for our offering dear Holy father we thank you so much for this opportunity to come before your throne to share with you the many blessings and, and even our fears and our concerns, but to share with you our blessings and all that you have done for us. We ask you, Lord, now, if you would please bless our tithes and our offerings and how much it means to us to be able to give these back to you. Bless every person and every family. In thy name, amen. Good morning, church family. I hope you're having a wonderful Sabbath at home. I know we all wish that we could be here together right now, but what I'd like to do, I'd like just to encourage you as we're going to pray together this morning. I know we're not together physically, but we can be together in spirit. So just like we would do if we were all here in the sanctuary right now, I just want to encourage you to, to kneel down if you have to pull a pillow off the couch and, you know, protect your knees a little bit. Let's just all kneel together if you're able to and, uh, and, and lift up our prayers to heaven. Dear Father, we are so grateful to be in your presence this morning. Uh, we all wish that we could uh, be in each other's presence. And I know that uh, this has been going on for several weeks now, well over a month for many of us, where we've been socially isolated. Uh, many of us live alone and you know, really have not had much of an opportunity to get together with other people. But we know that we are all brothers and sisters in, in Christ and that we are all your children and we all look to you as our Father. And we just thank you so much for the assurance that we have that no matter what happens on this earth, no matter what is whatever is happening right now, that all this is going to just completely pale in comparison to that wonderful day when you come back and take us all home and there will be no more COVID-19, there will be no more sickness of any kind, 
no more pain, no more loneliness, no more death, but just fellowship with each other and with you. And until that day comes, Lord, I just pray that you continue to strengthen us and give us uh, the assurance that that day will come, and it's probably going to come a lot sooner than any of us even realize. If there's anything that uh, recent events have shown us is that things can change very quickly. Six weeks ago, hardly anybody even heard of the word COVID-19, and now it's all we ever think about and hear about, and it certainly has had a dramatic impact on our lives. But we know that uh, it's going to be an even more dramatic impact when you come back. And again, we can't, look, we can't wait until that day comes, and we really look forward to it, Lord. We do have some members in our church who have been tested positive with the disease, and we pray that you uh, continue to help them recover. We thank you that they are doing well right now, and we pray that you help keep their family members safe and free of this disease. Uh, for those that do not have it, we just pray that you help us all to be responsible and be safe and to avoid getting sick. But for those that will get sick, Lord, because we know it's going to happen to some, I just pray that you strengthen each one of them, help everybody to do what they can to just fight this disease off. And uh, we know that before we know it, we'll all be back together again. Lord, finally, I want to lift up Pastor Morgan to you as he delivers a message to you this morning, or to us this morning. I pray that you speak through him and give us all wide open hearts and ears to hear that message and to receive what you have for us this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So now, as we've been doing the last few weeks, uh, we're going to take about five minutes for you to have an opportunity to call somebody that you know. It could be a member of the church, maybe not a member of the church, but just take five minutes to call somebody and pray just one-on-one -on -one with them. I know this has been a real blessing for me. I was able to speak to a, a good friend of mine last week that I haven't seen or talked to in several weeks because of uh, the quarantine that's been going on, and we had a nice uh, prayer time and conversation together. Um, and it's been a real blessing to a lot of our members. So even if you feel a little awkward doing this, it is kind of an intimate thing to do, to pray with people. But that's what makes it so special. And I promise you, you'll be blessed if you do call somebody. So we're going to start the timer right now, five minutes, and then Morgan will come up to preach. God bless you. <laughs> 